Hi, I'm Mark Osborne, and I'm a filmmaker. I just finished my new film, The Little Prince, uh, which is uh, both CG animation and stop motion animation. I've also uh, done work uh, extensively in stop motion on my own personal short films uh, called More and Greener. And I was one of the directors of Kung Fu Panda back in 2008, which was a CG animated project made by DreamWorks Animation with a little bit of 2D animation mixed in. I've also done live action uh, for the SpongeBob TV series and the, the first uh, SpongeBob feature film, I directed the live action sequences. There was a little prince who lived on a planet that was scarcely bigger than himself. <gasps> That's all. I'd never find anyone who wanted to hear my story. If you please draw me a sheep. Hey, come and play with me. I cannot play with you. I'm not tamed. I'm not... But if you tame me, oh, we shall need each other. This is a very difficult project to um, approach. The book is very precious to many people, and I wanted to be very careful about how I was going to approach it. And I had this, a couple of big ideas early on um, to protect the book by um, not just adapting the book, but by creating a larger story around the book to protect the book. And I felt that the best way to do this was to use two different animation techniques to differentiate the universe of the book that I wanted to keep intact and I wanted it to be artistic and poetic, just like the original text. So I used stop motion animation. And then this larger story that was really about a reality that surrounded um, the imagination of this main character, this little girl, I used CGI animation to tell the story of her reality and how her life is affected by this very powerful book. Um, it was very difficult to use two different techniques to tell this story, both from a technical um, uh, standpoint but um, just from a production standpoint, there's a lot of, uh, we had two different studios. Um, but I think the real challenges were about the narrative, about how to protect the book and draw out the important elements and themes and ideas from the book while um, protecting it and really trying to create a film that would work both for people who love the book and for people who have never read the book. So it becomes an initiation as well into the universe that was really incredibly created by Saint Exupéry so long ago. And I'm very honored to be able to um, expand on this material and underscore it and to pay tribute to it. And um, that's what I was most excited about was this chance to pay tribute to this amazing piece of material that has deeply affected my life. I mean, I, f I take a lot of inspiration. I find music to be very inspiring in my process, even when I'm just sketching or, you know, when I'm just um, writing or developing an idea. I use music as a way to transport myself, and I've always done that. My, my short more was inspired directly by the New Order song that I use as the soundtrack. Um, and in the case of The Little Prince, I was incredibly lucky to engage some tremendous artists that not only helped create um, a unique universe uh, of sound for the movie, but um, it was actually, I approached Hans Zimmer and asked him if he wanted to help, and he fell in love with the story. He really felt connected to the little girl's story, and he loved the book and wanted to help protect it. And he, along with a, a composer friend of his named Richard Harvey, and a musician named Camille, a French singer, um, they created an audio soundscape that, to me, is so beautiful and so connected to the emotions of the story. And I, I think music can really help tell the story, and it's such an important storytelling tool um, that, yeah, I've always been inspired by it, and it's always incredible to work with artists that can actually tap into um, what's special about um, a story. I had a really good experience in school, both at, at Pratt Institute and at CalArts, where I was um, you know, sort of exploring this artistic impulse that I didn't know a lot about. 
and I was kind of going by my gut. And it was really incredible to be in an environment with other people that were doing the same thing, but other teachers who could help guide me and help give me information. Like, um, it was incredibly one of the big eye-opening things that happened at Pratt was I had a photography teacher that made me understand and realize how connected Star Wars was to the hero's journey and the Joseph Campbell's writing about sort of the archetypes of storytelling. And I love Star Wars so much and I didn't understand why it was striking me on such a deep level. So it was really important. That was a pivotal moment for me and I think that's what really pushed me into wanting to make films when I realized just how deeply not only was that story connected to all of us and to all the archetypes that move us, but that's why it had such an impression on me. So um, I had a great experience, and CalArts was an incredible experience with a lot of other um, talented artists and filmmakers who inspired me. And um, we all worked um, together helping each other, but also sort of um, um, inspiring each other with our work. So I find that the environment is um, the important thing the environment that is created at a school and the expertise that you get from the teachers and the guidance that you get from the teachers can sometimes be, you know, it's incredible, it can be important, but it's just as important as what you get from your fellow students too. I think the, the greatest piece of advice that I got from one of my teachers, her name was Christine Panushka at CalArts, um, she said, um, I was really focused on um, different techniques and she said, always make sure that you're balancing content with context. And she said, don't just focus on one or the other. You really want to balance so that your end result is saying something in a unique way. And that, that's the piece of advice I give to anybody. Don't just focus on the craft. Find your voice as a storyteller. Find a way to tell a meaningful story, something that means something to you. And that's your best chance at being able to have the, what you make mean something to someone else.